If I could describe my Real Housewives of Melbourne experience, I would have to say it's been the most sensational experience of my life. How often does somebody get picked up off the street and get to ride around in limousines, drink French champagne and go to all the best parties? Like, what's not to like? If my friends had to describe me in three words, I think they would say glass half full. I think that reality is just perception, just your perception. And so might as well think glass half full as opposed to glass half empty. One of my favourite Real Housewives of Melbourne moments was when we were in the Philippines and we were on the 71th floor and uh, we went outside to have a glass of champagne to see the sunset and there was an electrical storm and all of our hair stood on end and I have never ever seen that before and it was a first that we all shared together. It was the most amazing feeling. Your hair slowly climbing, climbing, climbing and standing straight up on end. I have a few regrets from previous seasons. I regret uh, telling Gamble that I'd heard a rumour that just completely blew up in my face. Um, I regret telling on Gina for saying the C word. I had no idea these things would turn into you know, massive debacles. And I suppose that's, they're probably the worst so far. The experience of being on The Real Housewives of Melbourne is actually quite addictive. And what happens is once you get into the swing of it, I think I would miss all the parties and the champagne and the girls and the hair and makeup and the fashion. And it's a really addictive experience. I don't think people realise that. Nobody wants to leave. In season three, I'm looking forward to getting more depth about the characters and about actually everybody has an idea who, we're, who we are. And now we're going to find out a little bit about why we're like that, what makes us like that, and just get into a little bit more depth with the, each of the girls.